I'd like to open the um, July 28th meeting of the Northampton License Commission. Uh, Commissioner Campanelli is absent today. Uh, we are audio and video recording this meeting. Uh, if there's any public comment at this time about any other issue, if you don't expect to speak later, seeing none, uh, I'll move to the um, first item on the agenda, application for a common picture license. Um, I was looking at the minutes for the June 1st meeting. The first meet item is the violation hearing as a result of citywide underage liquor service compliance check uh, for six establishments in the city. Um, as we um, as we do with these cases, this is a public hearing about an alleged violation. Um, opening the hearing now, and what I'd like to do is anybody who expects to speak on this issue, um, whether for the police department or for uh, any of the licensees um, named here, or anybody else who expects to speak on any of these violations alleged violations, I'd ask them to stand up now and be sworn. Please stand to expect us to come this. Do you affirm that all the uh, information you will give today to the commission is true to the best of your knowledge? Say I do. I do. I do. Okay, thank you. Um, the um, usual procedure for us here is to hear first from the uh, police department about the violations. These are a result of citywide underage liquor service compliance check. Uh, so, Sergeant, uh, were you going to start? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, we have a, uh, as is also the custom with um, these violation hearings, uh, we have a court reporter present just to make sure that we have an accurate record of the proceedings. So, Sergeant, could you please state your name for the uh, record for the recorder? My name is Brian Lesseisen. My last name is L-E-T-Z-E-I-S-E-M. -E -E okay. So, Sergeant, uh, why don't we take these in order as they are on the agenda. Um, what we will do here is we will hear about the alleged violation from the, um, from the NPD. Uh, we'll then ask the licensee who has been so charged to respond uh, to uh, what the NPD has presented, and, um, and then we'll make a disposition. So, uh, do you want to start with the roof study, sir? Yes, sir. Go ahead. On Thursday, June 30th, starting at 5.30 at night, myself and three other police officers initiated an alcohol compliance check throughout the city of Northampton. With the assistance of the Northampton Prevention Coalition, we were provided with seven volunteers between the ages of 18 and under the age of 21. Um, they were each given portable breath, or preliminary breath tests at the beginning of the operation, registering at zero. 0 .0 BAC. Um, they were also checked again at the end of the um, detail to register the same 0.0, .0 BAC. Two officers went with Officer Staples and Wallace, three went with Officer Perry, and two went with myself. The volunteers were escorted throughout the city in unmarked police cruisers by previous listed officers. They attempted to purchase alcohol from each licensed establishment within the city. Each person was provided with a $20 bill prior to entering or a monetary amount depending upon the amount left from um, prior checks. During the compliance check, 101 establishments were checked, 21 were closed at the time of the check, 80 on-premises, and 21 off-premises licenses were checked. During the check, we had six violations. The first one took place at seven, just after seven o'clock at the roofs on uh, Bridge Street. And approximately 709, Officer Perry provided two under age, two, uh, sorry, under the age 21 volunteers with $20 each. They exited an unmarked cruiser and entered the roofs at 1 Market Street. When they exited the restaurant, they explained they had ordered a past blue ribbon beer and, uh, and a water from the front counter. The clerk did not ask for identification. The beer was purchased for $2.25. A receipt was requested, but it was not for, they only provided for one bottle of water. The clerk was described as a tall, lanky male with blonde hair. The f one of the female um, volunteers then brought the beer to a table, went to the bathroom, and left the restaurant. When she exited, she had $17.75 remaining of the initial 20. 
Once all the checks were completed, Officer Perry returned to the roost with, with the volunteer. She pointed out the male clerk who sold the beer. The male was identified as Alex Holm. Holm and the manager on duty, Margaret McMahon, were notified of the violation, provided with a not notice of violation. Okay. Do you have any questions for the uh, is anyone here from uh, the Roost who would like to respond to this? Please stand up and identify yourself for the record. Yeah, yeah, come on. Okay, just state your name for the recording. My name is Robin Wynn. My name is Adam Dunn. It's the UAETZ. We're the owners of the Roost. Okay, you've heard what the uh, sergeant has said. Um, uh, what is your response? We have um, no. Uh, disagreement with the sergeant's record of events. Um, we believe that it happened just the way that we described it. Um, there's one uh, detail that I think is incorrect, at least on the letter that we got, that Alex Holm was not the manager on duty. The manager on duty was Margaret McMahon. Alex was just uh, an employee behind the counter taking orders. Uh, yeah, actually, that is that is in, okay, that is what is in, in the uh, notice of complaint that I'm looking at. So okay, that is then, correct. Pardon me. Okay. Um, we, like I said, we have no argument. Um, it's the first time we've had an infraction in five and a half years. Um, we're just kind of like the health department. We're grateful when the health department comes through to help us make sure that we're running the ship as tight and clean as possible. We're grateful for this opportunity from the police department to sort of see a hole in what looks like it's a hole in our system. Um, everyone that works for us that's on the floor that takes orders is TIP certified, except for three new employees. So that's part of our protocol. When we hire people, we have them take, take the certification. We paid for it and we um, have uh, semi-regular as in maybe biannual meetings where we update people and we just sort of try and keep them fresh and all this information because we take it as a great responsibility to be serving alcohol. Um, this uh, incident uh, definitely uh, revealed to us uh, a, a flaw in our operation. Um, as it turns out, the employee that um, that handled the sale uh, no longer works for us. We didn't let him go, but he had been in his notice period where he lives, so they just be bleeding and moving away, and uh, uh, it's unfortunate that this happened. Um, it was a lapse in judgment on his part, and it was all before it needed to. I have no questions. Do you have any questions? Yes, let's see. Appreciate Thank you very much. Yeah. Is there any? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, right. Uh, I think we will take these in turn uh, for each one. Um, the, uh, uh, the the licensee has acknowledged that a violation occurred. Um, so um, I will make a motion that we uh, find a violation has occurred uh, uh, as outlined in the, uh, in the uh, charge from the police department. Oops. I will second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, having found that a violation occurred, uh, uh, the um, law regarding uh, service of uh, 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 alcoholic beverages to minors, um, the uh, sanction that we have often imposed for these things is um, to suspend the licensee's license to provide alcohol for a period of two days, but then we suspend the suspension for six months uh, pending no further violations. And um, this has been effective in the past. Um, so I would um, I would propose that that is a sanction in this case. Uh, um, I always find it very, very helpful when we, we work together with the business community and, and we see uh, license holders who accept responsibility. Um, what we all we do in these situations is look back and see if, if there's a history or a pattern. Uh, and when there isn't, and someone steps up and, sa and said, you know, we made a mistake, we've tightened up our procedures, we've done what we need to do to do our best to avoid happening this happening again, I support um, a suspension that is suspended and held in abeyance for six months. So that basically we can recognize the fact that someone, a business owner, has agreed to work with us and recognizes their responsibility. Um, so I, I agree with the proposal. Would you make that a motion?
motion? I will make a motion that uh, we suspend the license of the roost for two days and further we suspend that suspension, hold it in abeyance for six months, and if there is no further violation during that time, um, that suspension will end. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So you understand. I thank you. Do I have a question? Do you want me to approach? Yes, please. That's it. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, just assuming all things go as we expect that they will, that we won't have another violation in six months and probably won't have one again, um, I just want to know, is this a suspension on our record or if the suspension is suspended, is it, you know, sort of, I'm thinking in the big picture with the ABCC, you know, like, is this a, is this a, well, it is a violation. It, 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 we it did is find a violation. violation. It does go. It is in the public record. Just because the consequences of the violation are being suspended. And it doesn't make this. The ABCC noise. has access to all these sorts of things, but there is no effective sanction barring any further violation. Sure. So yes, it is on the record, but um, there, um, you know, uh, again, barring any further violation, there will be no further action taken by anybody that I can. Can I, can I, I think this might be what you're asking about is when you apply for a different type of license to ask if there was ever a suspension served on the thing. That is what I'm asking about. Yeah. So if you probably say no. served a suspension. No, got it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, Sergeant. <coughs> uh, the second violation of the evening happened uh, just after 8, 8 p.m at Taipei, Tokyo, uh, 16 to 18 Crafts Ave in Northampton. At that time, Officer Perry provided the same two volunteers with um, money, 1775 for one and $20 for the other one. Um, they exited the cruisers, and they entered the restaurant. When they exited, they explained they had ordered one of order a Bud Light beer, and an identification was requested. She stated she did not have it, before she could get up to exit the, the restaurant, the waiter stated it's okay, and proceeded to serve her the Bud Light. The waiter was described as a tall Asian male. A receipt was provided for $4.01. And the document, the waiter's name is Alex. She also stated they, they had waited for change, but it was never provided. Um, once all the checks were completed, Officer Perry returned to that restaurant <coughs> with the volunteer. She was unable to observe the same waiter in the restaurant. However, the owner, Mr. Chen, recognized and stated that he had seated the females at Alex's booth. He further stated that Alex's real name is Kai Chen. The owner was notified of the violation and provided with the notice of violation. Is anyone here from Taipei and Tokyo? Or just speak to please. And could you just identify yourself for the record? Hi, uh, my name is Kong Chen. I'm the manager of Taipei Tokyo. Do you need? Okay. Uh, could you give her uh, how to spell your name? Uh, K U N G H U N. And And uh, my name is um, Kai Chen, uh, K-A-I-C-H-E-N. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So please uh, answer the uh, sergeant's uh, testimony. Um, we have been running a business in India almost five years. I always teach my server to check the ID before I serve. And it's, it's, um, Alex is our new waiter, and I have been teaching them at least. And I know that they are these two young people come. And then uh, I told him to make sure if they want wine, uh, wine, and make sure you check the ID. But um, I went out for delivery, so I passed it in there while we were sitting, sitting. And when I came back, they already come. So um, and I asked them, I asked Alex how uh, they ordered the oil. They told me, and he told me he ordered a beer, and then I asked to make sure that he said yes. And that's all I know, so I passed it in there. So, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. Um, for my part, um, yeah, I did ask for the ID, um, and the um, they said that they didn't have the ID with them, and I um, said yes, because um, for my reason was um, they, I can't, well, I can't say it was my fault. I do take fault for what happened. Um, it's just that when I asked for the ID, um, 
died in vacation, they gave me a look saying that, you know, maybe they, they were offended of not being, you know, above 21, which gave me the notion that maybe they were above 21, just that they forgot their ID at home. And that was my reason, but I know that it was, um, it was my fault for not um, going more thoroughly and not giving them the alcohol beverage. Okay. So um, you're acknowledging the violation occurred as, as the sergeant outlined? Right. You were saying it, it did occur as, as, as a, it, And Alex, are you TIPS trained or service trained? Um, no, I only been working at Taipei for about a month. I just recently started and um, I never had a waiter background, so this is actually my first job as a waiter. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, um, in the matter of Taipei and Tokyo, uh, the licensee has also, uh, in this case, acknowledged that a violation occurred. Um, so, um, having heard that, I would move that we find that a, um, a violation of uh, Chapter 138, uh, Section 34, has occurred here. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, okay, having found a violation occurred, uh, I will note that there is no previous um, uh, uh, infraction on the record of Taipei and Tokyo. So, um, I would ask you what sanction um, you might consider appropriate in this case. Um, there has been an acknowledgement. My only concern is when we hear that someone has not been TIPS trained uh, or certified at this point um, and a month has gone by, my question is when is that going to happen? Um, uh, sure, yeah, so I, that would be helpful, yes. Um, Either the manager or Alex, whoever, whoever. When would you go for the training? Um, uh, it's helpful and might have given you um, better uh, better experience in order not to yes. fall into this. Um, uh, unfortunately, even uh, this is my first job as a waiter. Yeah. Um, I actually do not know that there um, was something like that as in like the training service. Um, I actually do not know about that at all. Well, let, let me speak to your boss here then. Um, are your, your other staff at TIPS trained? Um, we have at least people. So I I don't know if this they have a team training or not. Okay. Uh, how are we going to how are we going to ensure that this type of thing doesn't happen? Normally uh, I'm in a regional point all the time. So when they serve in the beer, I always double check with that to check the ID. So that's the only way I ensure we don't. So are you TIPS trained? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any possibility that you could work with Cindy to, to arrange some TIPS training for some of your folks? It sounds like you on uh, occasion have to be away from. Right, because sometimes, you know, um, when stuff is changed really over, uh -huh. right, maybe we did, I don't think we'll so figure something out to work with that. And, uh, Cindy, is that something you can be helpful with? I can get you all the information on where to get either sort of safe or Okay. We so strongly recommend. Yeah, yeah. Right, I think yeah, Because this is a first yeah. violation. You've had a good record. Right. And not like to see a pattern developed. It's, yeah. And it's not just you. We, we recommend this to everybody with a license to serve alcohol. Yeah. So everybody who's going to be serving to people get the training. Yeah. And it's not just for underage serving, serving to minors, but it's also you know, finding the person who's, you know, way too drunk to be served anymore, okay. uh, other sorts of other sorts of things that go with the service of alcohol, which don't apply to the service of food. So if you have a, um, uh, if you have a, a chance to get together with Cindy and to make arrangements for all your staff, as many as possible to get the tips training, that would help and certainly help Alex here. So. So, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Um, so, so I'll make a 
motion, um, again, based on the uh, clean record of this particular uh, violator, I'll make, it, uh, I'll make a motion that we do a two-day suspension that is suspended for six months um, so long as there is not any further violation during that period of time. And that in addition to that motion, we make a strong recommendation to the uh, owners and manager that uh, there, there be some further tips, safe sort of training for staff. Okay, I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So again, it is the um, same sanction is provided to the other license. <coughs> Thank you very much, Sergeant. The third violation took place at uh, 8.15 p.m. Uh, and it took place at La Vera Cruzana at 31 Main Street downtown. Officer Perry provided the one of the underage or under 21 volunteers with a $20 bill. She actually had my cruiser and they proceeded to enter La Vera Cruzana. When they exited the restaurant, they explained that to Connor. They were, uh, one of them ordered a Corona light beer. The cashier requested identification and stated and the volunteer stated he did not have any. The cashier immediately asked, you're not the police, are you? And then she opened and served him the beer. He was arrived with a receipt for the beer documenting it cost $3.50, and then it was served uh, by Kathleen. When they exited, they had $16.50 left from the $20 bill. The cashier was described, described as a short female with curly hair. Once all the checks were completed, Officer Perry returned to the establishment. Uh, the volunteers had pointed out the cashier. And she was identified as Esther Garcia. Martin Carrera was also the manager on duty. Both Garcia and Carrera were advised of the violation and provided the notice of the violation. And it should be noted that in our records, that in January 14th of 2009, the uh, Veracruz was guilty of the same violation. Okay, thank you, Sergeant. Um, could you identify yourself? Sunya Hood, S U N I A, for Veracruz Foods, La Cruzana. And we um, do agree with what happened in the event that took place. Um, there's no dispute there. I noticed that we're the most expensive beer so far in town. So, but anyway, um, and uh, we are half, I would say that half the um, employees that serve alcohol are tips trained and we are working to get the other half also. Um, we, al we always look for a bilingual tips training, one in Spanish, and so that, it doesn't stop us from getting it. There's not an excuse for that, but we do train them both in Spanish and in English and try to do that. Um, Catalina is not tips trained, but um, we do have her, we're looking for a training for her. You're signing her up for Yes. Having found a violation occurred, 
Um, let me note that in this case, there was a previous, as the sergeant pointed out, a previous violation in the record. However, it was seven and a half years ago. And um, it was um, two day suspension, suspended for six months at that time. Uh, we're seven years past the six months, so uh, I'm not sure how germane because staff changes, people change, restaurants change over time. However, it does attach to the license uh, that Mr. Carrera has held at this location for that time. So whether we want to take that into consideration here in the sanction, uh, let me ask you first uh, what you think. I think enough time. I think with that amount of time, I, I just think it's stale. I, 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 would, I would treat this, this violation um, as we did the previous two. Okay, then I'll make a motion that we impose a two-day suspension to be uh, suspended uh, for a period of six months, barring any further violation. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. So that the uh, suspension would be the same as prior. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sergeant? Fourth violation uh, took place at 9.15 p.m. Uh, I personally provided 200 each, I the 21 volunteers with each $20 bill. They exited my Rock Cruiser and into Sakura, the Sakura restaurant, which is also divided in a vegan pallet on 261 King Street. When they exited the restaurant, they explained that they each ordered an alcoholic beverage from the waiter on the vegan uh, pallet side of the restaurant. Uh, one ordered a Coors Light beer, and the other ordered a Cosmopolitan. No identification was requested by the waiter, and they were served with beverages. We provide a receipt for the alcohol not to be purchased at eight dollars fifty eight cents. They describe the waiter as an Asian male with a buzz cut of glasses. The receipt documented his name as Mr. Jacob. Once all the checks were complete, I responded back to the restaurant with the volunteers. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, it was just after ten o'clock. The uh, uh, establishments were closed. Um, the previous, uh, the following night, I had Officer Van Bosker, who works the three to eleven shift, go to the restaurant. He was able to serve Mr. Chen the owner um, and manager of the notice of violation. While Officer Van Buster was there, he showed Mr. Chen the receipt and gave the provided description of the waiter. He stated that the waiter was a male by the name of Mr. Lin, and he was also working at the time of the notification. It should be noted that uh, this establishment has two prior violations. In June of 2010, they received a two-day suspension, a two-day suspension suspended for six months, and in February 28th, 2013, we received a four day suspension that was suspended for two years. Thank you. Is there anybody here from Socorro the Hi. Hi. Could you identify yourself for the record, please? Yeah. To, to the court. up a little so I'm sorry you are are you the owner of the restaurant yeah, well, are you the manager yes. of record <coughs> and you are oh. I see.
So you worked there for three months. Uh, have you received this training we've been talking about, tips, training, or services? No. Uh, Mr. Chen, have, are you tips trained? Yeah. You are? Okay. How about your staff? Other members of your staff, other other waiters, waitresses there, are they tips trained or service safety trained? Other people? Oh, uh, yeah, the one people. I'm oh, sorry? The one people. So, how many, about how many people work there altogether? Uh, all is a full. Uh, and one of those is trained as well as yourself. Uh, is there anything else you want to say about this? Um, yeah, uh, so um, at the night is my At the night is 9.15, the PM, and the two guys come in, and they order beers, and, and I ask for the, they ask for the beers, because, uh, uh, and then I give them one beer on the table, and I ask for the ID after it. Put a beer on the table because uh, they say they forgot the, the ID in the car and they go get it. And then they just said, I see. Okay. So you'd already serve them with beer when you ask for the ID. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Questions? I, I would like to know um, if Mr. Chen yeah. was the owner. 2015. Yeah. Okay. Were you the owner in 2010? Yes. No, uh, not 2010. I, I almost started uh, starting, yeah. starting 2013. Okay. It makes makes a difference. I, I want to see if there's a pattern. previous violation, the, the last one, uh, the sergeant has said that there was one for the same thing in February 28th of 2013. Yeah. So you came in before us then? Yeah, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, again, we'd like to avoid you having to come back and visit with us. And the best way that we've found is to get as many of your employees trained, going through a TIPS training, so that they don't forget uh, when it gets busy, et cetera, they realize that this could happen. Um, and again, Cindy is happy to give you all the information, and we strongly urge you to do this so that we don't have to impose sanctions that will harm your livelihood, which we would like not to do. But we found that's the best way to avoid this happening repeatedly. And again, you weren't responsible for what happened under this name in 2010, but you were responsible um, you know, fairly shortly after taking over. Um, you were before us. Um, so it's, it's three years, and that is a, a significant amount of time, but it's uh, you don't you really don't have enough people from our perspective trained in the TIPS uh, system and the serve safe system. Really, uh, I know you have a small staff, but um, we'd like to see other people trained there. It's not it's not lengthy training. It's certainly not a big burden on on the establishment, and it's worth your time. Otherwise, you know these sorts of things can happen serious. If you can arrange for training where everybody's going to serve alcohol, um, very helpful. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, again, the um, licensee has acknowledged 
that a violation occurred as outlined by the um, police department. So uh, I will make a motion that we find a violation of Chapter uh, 138, Section 34. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, having found a violation occurred, uh, let me suggest that um, this is a second violation. It is last time we proposed a suspended suspension, a two year one. Well, it's passed it now. It's a year, over a year past that. However, I think that um, as, a, um, as an incentive to um, uh, to compliance with the law and also to compliance with the tip training recommendation we made that I, I would suggest uh, we do a two-day suspension, suspend it again for two years in this case, um, just because it seems in order to me. Do you agree? I, 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 think, I think we need to have a little bit of a carrot and a stick approach here. I, I really think this is a Then I'll make a motion that we uh, suspend the license uh, to serve alcohol for, for Sakura and Deacon Pallet for a period of two days. Uh, however, that suspension uh, not to be served, uh, barring a further violation within a period of two years. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. So, uh, Mr. Chen. So, what we've done here is if you have another violation of this same um, statute of the same law serving underage people within a period of two years if we find if the police department comes to us with another violation we find that another violation has occurred you would have to serve this two days within if it happens within the next two years you would have to serve this two days plus whatever other sanction we might impose for that second violation. So do you, do you get that? Yeah. Okay. So you're, you won't serve any suspension as long as there's no further violation that is alleged and found within two years. Okay? Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Sergeant. We're just rolling right along here. Violation 5 took place at Convino Wine Bar located at 101 Armory Street at uh, 916. Officer Wallace and Officer Staples provided 221 year old volunteers with a $20 bill each. When they entered, uh, they exited the MR Cruiser and entered Convino Wine Bar. When they exited the bar, they explained that they were seated at the bar where they each ordered a glass of wine. The bartender did not request identification and they each served a glass of wine. They requested the check and paid for the wine. They were to provide a receipt for the wine at $17.66, along with $2.34 in change. They described the bartender as a dark haired male with glasses wearing a black shirt. The name Scott was provided on the receipt. It should be noted that the officers were able to observe this entire encounter through the window while they were seated in the parking lot. Once all the checks were completed, Officer Staples and Wallet returned to the bar with both of the females, and they stated the bartender was no longer working. When they spoke with the owner, Caroline McDaniel, she said that Scott, Scott Salas had been the employee and he had left after serving the females, believing that they were underage. McDaniel was notified of the violation and provided with a notice of violation. Thank you, Sergeant. Uh, is somebody here who come here, Ms. McDaniel? So you just identify yourself. For so I'm Caroline McDaniel. Scott Salas, that's S as in A L U S. If you could respond to the uh, officer's charge. That's exactly what happened. Okay. Um, and, and it, we, the second they paid for it, it's like we woke up and, and looked at them. Um, but it, it absolutely happened. We both are. We both are. I, I was in my office, uh, so I didn't actually witness witness it. But um, it was the end of Scott's shift, 
and we were doing the changeover stuff, and it was a mistake. And it's not our it's not our policy to uh, to not ID, ID people, but it just it's. Thank you, Ms. Mutek. Thank you, Ms. Okay. All right. Uh, again, the uh, licensee is acknowledged violation of Chapter 138, Section 34. So I'll make a motion that we find them in violation of said chapter. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. And the sanction um, in line with what we've been doing, I would propose a two day suspension of the of the license to serve alcohol, however, to be suspended for a period of six months barring any further violation. Uh, I would second that in light of the fact that there's no prior uh, violation. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Well, thank you. Sergeant, last one. Violation 6 took place at 9.30, just after 9.30 at night. I provided one volunteer with uh, $11. He then exited my MR cruiser into the lobby of the Fairfield Inn Suites located at 115A Con Suite. When he exited the lobby, he had an, uh, an unopened 12 ounce Blue Moon beer in his possession along with $6 of change. He explained that he had entered and asked for a Blue Moon beer and was served it. The desk clerk was described as a male with a ponytail. He said that the beer cost $5, but he did not get a receipt. Once all the checks were completed, I returned with the mail. He was able to point out the male working at the front desk who served him. The male was identified as Nicholas Costello. Costello and the manager on duty, James um, Mahalik, were notified of the violation and Costello admitted to serving. They were provided with notice of violation. Okay. Is somebody here from the department? Sir, how are you? Hello. Good. Please identify yourself. Yeah, my name is Simon Tenby. I am the regional director that oversees Fairfield. Uh, yes, it did happen. Um, unfortunately, it was an employee in new hire had been with us very short few weeks, less than a month. Marriott does require mandatory tip training. He wasn't there long enough to go to training. And we had a training scheduled for August 8th for, for even whether they are trained or not, everybody's going to go through it one more time. And we have put some signs, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with setup or not, there's a, it's a, like a refrigeration, you have to unlock it in order to sell anything. It's a lobby market. And we have put a big red sign on it, ID is required. We have put one with the key that opens that, just, you know, red signs to uh, bring it to the, Okay, um, the licensee has acknowledged the violation occurred as outlined by the NPD, Chapter 138, Section 34. So I will make a motion that the violation of uh, said section did occur. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Having found the violation has occurred, uh, I note that there was no previous violation for this licensee. So um, uh, I will make a motion to um, impose the same sanction, a two-day suspension to be suspended for six months barring further violation. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 So, uh, same violation, two day suspension uh, to be suspended for six months, barring a further violation. Sergeant, is there anything else we should bring to our attention this time? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate the work that the department does in these compliance checks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is application for short-term wine and malt license, uh, the VFW in Florence. Somebody here for the VFW.
just like you, Jen. I'm sorry. No problem. <laughs> I apologize. It's more of a Application for change of manager pledge of license looking for the floor on King Street with yeah. him. Okay. Thank you. Once again. Thank you. Uh, Pros manager David J. Persana. Uh, and the pledge of license also on the agenda for Pledge to People's Bank. So who wants to begin? Sure, I'm attorney Tom Griffin representing the petitioners. This is Mr. Prusana, proposed manager. This is Mr. Morrison, who's the existing manager. Okay, tell us uh, first about the change of manager. Yeah, it's uh, they're expanding their business. Uh, they need to have a new manager come in. Uh, Mr. Prusana has been working there for 12 years as an employee. Um, he's a resident of Amherst, and uh, he's filled out all the necessary paperwork. He doesn't have a criminal record, thank God. And uh, he's been training. He has a lot of experience working in the, in the liquor store for 12 years. Uh, he is tips trained. Okay. And you're not a partner in the business? No. Okay. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Uh, could you tell us uh, briefly then about the pledge of license? Sure. Like I said, uh, Lucas 44 is expanding, and uh, they're doing new financing with People's Bank in order to facilitate their expansion. So as part of it is they're uh, just pledging this license as collateral as part of their refinancing their existing debt to People's Bank, as well as uh, other stores being bought, not in the same corporation names, but it's part of the whole financing package. But the uh, license of this particular store has been pledged to People's Bank under the uh, financing agreement that you worked out with a line of credit and yes. existing debt and all yes. that. And the other stores, such as the one in Amherst or Holyoke? So they were all going to be part of it. Yeah. <coughs> Simultaneously right now, my partner's down in Springfield doing, making the same proposal. Okay. Do you have any questions? scotches, small batch bourbons, and then we'll do probably in between six and ten uh, scratch-made cocktails. Uh, we will not uh, uh, employ the help of Pepsi or Coca-Cola by putting soda guns in. We're not going to be doing rum and cokes and all those kind of mixed drinks. We're going to do very much craft cocktail. We're looking into artisanal and uh, craft distilleries. Uh, we're going to be a little bit of a higher price point. Uh, we're trying to accentuate what we do already with this alcohol and not try to create a whole new 
business. You know, uh, right now uh, we still experience maybe a 10% loss of the customer base when people come in the door. Literally, we'll sit down and then believe it or not, we'll leave when they know they can't have a cocktail. Uh, we're in sort of a little oasis there you know, on Strong Avenue, surrounded by full liquor licenses and it's been a detriment to the business over the last 10 years. Uh, mind you, we, we have been able to employ 28 people and do fairly well. We're up to date, you know, as you see with our certificate of good standing with the state, we're up to date with all our vendors. You know, we run a pretty solid business. Uh, that bar itself has been serving hard liquor over it for 75 years before I moved in, and then I ruined it by not uh, being able to afford or uh, be so inclined to get a full alcohol license was part of it. It was a 50-50 split, to be straight honest with you. After years in Amherst dealing with the uh, the alcohol scene, that's part of the reason why we're truly choosing to do more of a craft cocktail initiative there and uh, really, like I said, accentuate the dining experience rather than operate a bar. Right now, we're about a 50-50 split between alcohol sales and food. Food is definitely a little bit more at times. Uh, we serve food from 3, uh, 3 p.m. When we open till midnight, seven days a week, um, and we uh, we have people eating right up until midnight and coming in for food then. So, so it's it's a pretty balanced environment. Uh, right now, I have a couple new people. Um, about nine percent of my staff is is tip certified. I have a new new waitress is the one that's not, <laughs> but everybody else. Uh, my oldest Tell employee. Tell her what you observed. Yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. But everybody, uh, uh, you know, I have uh, my, my uh, I have uh, several employees who've been there for the entire ten years. Uh, most of my employees have been there between five and eight years. Uh, everybody's uh, over twenty nine years old for sure. <laughs> who was on my wait staff and bartenders, uh, and uh, they uh, they we run a pretty tight shift. So it's um, like I said, it's really there to accentuate and. And uh, we hope to bring a little bit, you know, I, I really uh, have a, a, a good feeling about the way Strong Avenue and, and the downtown is sort of developing. I know there's been a lot of issues with people and, and the way downtown is heading, but I feel that there's a good influx of uh, some new new blood, so to speak, in, in the downtown restaurant scene that I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, keep going for another 10 years at least. And, you know, that's encouraging to me. I think we've got some good things happening in town. So. I see that you're not proposing any alterations to the premises that will stay as they are. No, yeah, just the only thing we'll be adding is a, uh, a freezer to be able to accommodate uh, big I mean, no, yeah, no, 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 so everything's the same, exactly the same. We're going to do big ice cubes. <laughs> big ice cubes. Okay. <laughs> big round, if you want to. And uh, you are still running this place uh, for Mr. Baltal? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, um, and I see that this do you have questions for Mr. in the future maybe we could have to provide more paperwork like a little bit yeah, yeah why not <laughs> yeah. sure we did we, we did it though enough trees with this. <laughs> yeah. More yeah. Um, okay while you're looking at that I will notice that we received cards back from um, from the butters uh, regarding this application including uh, nearby educational and spiritual institutions is there anybody here uh, who wishes to speak who falls <coughs> in that um, category, a butter or spiritual educational institution located uh, within uh, 500 feet of this establishment? Seeing nobody, is there anybody else who wishes to speak to uh, this matter of granting a full alcohol license to Sierra Bar and Grill? Seeing none, uh, I will make a motion that um, uh, we find uh, in the matter of uh, uh, 16C that there is no uh, apparent uh, detriment to any nearby educational or spiritual institution posed by the granting of this license. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, So um, the, uh, the terms of this license, you know them. Um, it's, it's not like other full alcohol licenses. It's attached to your business, um, doing business at Sierra Bar and Grill at this address at the Old Bay State Hotel. Uh, if you should uh, go out of business or you know, cease to operate there, 
this license reverts to the city and can't be transferred to another person. You knew, but you knew that. And I am fully 100 percent by that. Okay. I think that is a, 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 a fully on. <laughs> I just think that that's a great. It was a great uh, solution to a, I think a, 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 if I may speak a, a, a problem sort of uh, uh, standard of the way things happen. And I think that's a good alternative to it. Is that you provide something to the people, then they can just get back to the city and allows room for someone else to come in. I do have a question though regarding uh, my uh, year-round beer and wine license that I do have now, which is this. And my question being is that when you, we, yeah, but I, and we, I don't know if we ever kind of came to a resolution on this. Is that something that's just disappearing? And if I ever wanted to open another business, I wouldn't have, because the, the reason, the way it works is you do your seasonal and then you amend it and seasonal and amend it. Yeah. And you pay a lot more for those, whatever it was, three or five years. And now a year round was less. So I was wondering, you know, if it's. No, you can't hang on to Okay, it. hang on. Okay, that's all right. Yeah. And I have one license and a staff, a, a license premise one. You could sell it. If somebody okay. found there's a value in it, you could transfer it. But you should do that promptly because as soon as we grant you this license, you yeah. have no plans to open up another place that serves just wine and malt. Right. So we would consider that a pocket license. Well, that's what I was wondering if I had time, if I was curious about another few properties that have been available to do a year round wine and malt. So I wish we would give you a reasonable amount of time. Given yeah, I've been not looking at some. Not, not eight years. Is, What's that? Not eight years, as you might imagine. No, 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 no. Yeah, but, no. I, I mean, they would. I would resolve it in the next couple months. That's what I was thinking. There's okay. a few problems. <laughs> it's just because I, you know, I, I have uh, some existing business plans that I was looking to apply, and I thought that it was, you know, it's a, it's a significant savings over the amendment time period. I think it was, you know, now I think it's twenty five hundred dollars. When the, no, it's five thousand by each year now. Well, it's, no. Oh, no, I mean, it's no. five thousand altogether. A thousand added to each year. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that the convert for the conversion. Yeah. So right. Exactly. So. So if you wanted to, um, to do that, um, and you found the market, um, please um, <coughs> promptly. If you want to transfer it, if you want to open another place, come back and let us know. If you okay. Decide on that course. But just so now, give us a timeline yeah. of when you plan to open if you yeah. do a new place. Yep. So, okay. Yeah. Like I said, I just didn't want it to all of a sudden just go go away and then kick myself and be like, I come I didn't. Yeah. All right. It doesn't. Yeah. But it, it's no longer um, no. Yeah. able to operate at uh, the base. Center. Exactly. Right. That's what I meant. Yeah. And then, and just to get a timeline here in my mind, it, it's up to the ABCC now for their. Yeah. They have to. They have to. We hope rubber stamp yeah. this thing. Yeah. And once you once they do. Cindy will give you the license and you can start serving. <coughs> yeah, I give you a check first, though, right? Or a check. check, right? Before I give you the license. Yeah. I'm going to send it to the ACC tomorrow. Okay. I'm just speaking. <laughs> I just said I'll be able to do away with that. Any other okay. questions? Okay. No, that's it. Thank you. Any other questions about it? No, no. I just wanted to uh, yeah. talk okay. briefly about it. So I just was on All right. Mind. No, that's right. it. Okay, good. All things are well. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, item number eight, application for new annual alcohol license for Acts of 2016, chapter 109, same thing, for local burger. Okay, again, you know the drill. Uh, your name, please? Jeff Aguirre. I'm sorry? Jeff Aguirre. Okay, and uh, tell us uh, how your business will change if uh, you uh, receive this treasured thing. We also don't want to go the bar just because it hasn't Blue cocktail menu, uh, beer, wine, and also spike milkshakes. Um, What's that? Spike milkshake, milkshakes as well. Okay. Yeah. So we don't want to be a bar room. Uh, for the for cocktails that will go with our our food that we do. Um, plan serving <coughs> alcohol until 10 p.m. during the week and midnight on weekends. We also like to continue with doing our late night dining, which we do until 3 a.m. on the weekends. If that's something that we can do. But you will be serving Only uh, uh, like distilled that. liquor. Yes. Yeah, not just in spiked milk shakes, but in yeah, yeah, a little, little cocktail menu. I so see. again, eight to ten drinks that we can have. I see. Okay. And are you expanding or no adding any coolers? Nothing, nothing, no, no construction, adding coolers and
Okay, I notice also in this case, since this is right down the street, that we also sent out um, cards to abutters to nearby spiritual educational institutions regarding the hearing for this license. Is anybody here uh, from any nearby um, places who were noticed of this hearing wishes to speak to this application? Okay, is there anybody else from the public who wishes to speak about the granting of a possible vlog hall license to this place? Seeing none, uh, and we heard nothing back from the uh, letters, I will move that uh, in the matter of Chapter 16C, this uh, granting of this license will, uh, will uh, not be detrimental to activities of any nearby educational or spiritual institutions. There's a motion. And I will second that. All those in favor say aye. <coughs> okay. Uh, do you have any questions? I do not. No. Yeah. Thank right. you. Okay. Thanks very much. So, again, yes. um, local burger operating at this address to your uh, your uh, corporation. Um, 16 Main Street. Where, where are you? 16 Main Street. 16. Yes. Is that the name of your? Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's local burger. Local, local burger. Okay. All right, there it is, okay. Um, so those are the terms, yes. you know that? Yes. The words of the city, okay. And um, uh, we will send the application to the ADCC tomorrow. Right. And um, okay, we didn't, we didn't actually move the grant. In 4.3. Yeah, okay. it's All right, uh, I will make a motion to approve uh, an all-alcohol license to be granted to local burger under the terms of uh, the Acts of 2016, Chapter 109. And I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. And, and also for the um, some of the, uh, the 4.3 of the ABCC. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item number nine, application for common pictorial license. Glazed Donut Shop, 8 Crafts Avenue. Hi. Hi. Uh, your name, please. Karen Rhodes. Okay, and tell us what you're planning to do at Crafts Avenue. Uh, we are planning to open a second branch of our Glazed Donut Shop. We have an existing store in Amherst. Uh, we've been there almost four years now. Um, all the production will continue to happen in Amherst, and we're going to transport the donuts night by trailer to Northampton because the craft that location is not set up with a um, vent and hood and fire suppression and it's not feasible to set it up there. Um, we will be moving our oven to Northampton to expand our gluten-free baking operation because there's room to do that. We plan to be open 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. seven days a week for now. If the business shows us that people want donuts later at night, then we may consider opening later. Um, in Amherst, we're open till midnight during the week and 2 a.m. on the weekends. Um, but I'm not eager to replicate that here <laughs> because it's a lot of work. <laughs> and this address is this where that coffee and tea shop mm -hmm. used to be? Yes. Second, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Um, pending approval, the Board of Health will be amended on motion. Um, all those in favor? Uh, the amended motion. Second. Second. All those in favor, motions amended. Aye. Aye. Okay. You have to get your Board of Health. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Thank you, sir. Application for common big license, uh, bamboo, which is 311 Riverside Drive. So we're here for you. Bamboo. Hi. Hi. Your name, please. Uh, Mariella's Marathon. Okay. And 
tell us what you want to do. We want to open an Asian restaurant, and it's um, our first time doing it. Um, it's been a challenge, but it's been Just uh, dinner and lunch. Yes. And uh, we are waiting for a workers' comp certificate. Yes. Okay. And the fee and the approval from the Board of Health. We're so waiting on our landlord to get some of the stuff out before the health department. So you, have, you haven't finished setting the place up yet? We haven't. It's almost there yet. move we approve the application for common vic license for bamboo asian cuisine 311 riverside drive pending receipt of the uh, board of health certification the first common certification okay second second all those <coughs> Place is not operating right now, though. There's no service of food, there's no service of, of wine at all there. That's correct. correct. At, the, at the moment, okay. they're just undergoing some So, we are granting Mr. Kutowski, uh, if we agree, uh, uh, the ability to operate as manager of Rias of Ibiza Tapas, uh, Rias Vajas LLC being the uh, corporation at that address okay. and nothing more at this time. Nothing. However, do you anticipate being back before 
the place is reopened for the service of food and, and, and wine and malt? Yes. Do, do, I mean, will you be back before the place is reopened with further things that you, uh, including whatever corporate changes or anything like that? Our intention was, was to be back in September. I believe the intention to open is in the next couple of weeks. So we but it won't reopen as a beef and tapas. It, it will continue to operate uh, under the licensee that, that it is now, which is Reese by Access LLC, DBA, Beef and Tapas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, that's until not, until we're told otherwise, this place is Rio Spice LLC, mm -hmm. DBA, DBA, Beef and Tapas. Absolutely. That has not changed at all. Um, then if, if this is that narrowly um, defined, then uh, do you have any questions for Mr. Grover or Mr. Grover? No, it would just be speculation. Okay. All right, so um, uh, September, you say? Uh, we expect to be back in, in front of you uh, for the September meeting of the other maps. Yeah. Okay. And, um, as far as you know, you're not going to be serving any food or wine or beer at that address until you've resolved other things. That's correct. Okay. All right. Um, I will make a motion then that we uh, approve the um, uh, trans the change of manager uh, from Sonia Blanco um, to Sebastian Pitowski for. Um, Tapas. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Tapas under the current license. Under the current license, mm -hmm. and you'd be open. Mm -hmm. And then whatever other changes will come later. That's exactly so uh, be the tapas remains in operation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. Sorry for that. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, item twelve. Item twelve. Moving right along. Thanks. Application for wine tasting agricultural event cottage for our winery, Miller Hill Winery, uh, to operate a three county fair uh, September 2nd through September 5th. Hi. Hi, I'm Sue Goddard. I'm the uh, current sole managing member of the Goddard's Red Hill Farm LLC. Um, my husband Larry and I will be hopefully sampling our wines again at the three county fair. You were before us last year on this. Yes, exact yes, same. I think we've done this. Four years around right. now, sure. We're the one winery that's sticking it out there. Good. I notice your MDAR is here. Everything is, is on file, and your check is here. I have no further questions. Okay. I'll make a motion that uh, we grant this application. Second, all those in favor, aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. Item number 13 application for change of manager, Papa Gino. We're on King Street, and Tina Barbieri to Kimberly Goodrich. Hello. Hi there. You are? Hi. Hi. You're welcome. So uh, you want to be the manager for um, Papa Gino's. Didn't we just take a change of manager? Didn't you know just recently? Yeah. Yes, we did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> I still wait on me. What's going on? <laughs> no, no, no. Just tell us. So tell us uh, briefly about your experience in. Um, in the uh, service of alcohol. Um, in my previous position, I was a hospitality on premise manager for two weeks for 12 years. So I had um, my service of alcohol every time I was required. Um, I was responsible for teaching my staff proper IDing, you know, double checking, IDs, um, proper service, as 
far as consumption. So we currently have just your line um, at Papa Jones. I see. Okay. And uh, you're from uh, West Side? West Side, yeah. Um, let's see everything's here, including the check. Okay. <laughs> I might need to get the corporate people to this is my talking yes. to send another check because they send it to the board commission instead of license commission. But I'm working on that with the tax collector, so hopefully it will be okay. Okay. Okay, I will make a motion to um, accept the change manager authorized four forty three in this matter. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank Best you. of luck. Thanks. Okay, item number 13. 14. 14. Application for one day wine and malt license. How would I say in my terms? Lone Wolf 63 Main Street Amherst Mass wishes to uh, serve at the Northampton Bike Festival in the park on September 18th. He was Somebody. not able to be here last minute. I told him I'd okay. give it to you. I think this is okay. okay. Yeah. They did this before. Yeah. The same thing. I see that everything is in order. It's a nonprofit. Profits to be donated to Northampton Cycling Club. Um, I will make a motion to accept this short term. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Uh, item number 15 application for one day wine and malt license Forbes Library. Um, Had at least one of you. Yes. yes. Now there is uh, an, an extremist. What, what, what is the section? You would know. It's August 3rd. So. Okay. You have no fiduciary um, interest in this transaction. No, do you receive any salary or no, stipend as no, a trustee of Forbes Library? Do, not do you receive any other intangible benefit which might accrue to you if we were to grant this application for a license? I am not aware. I am not present. Okay, aware. having noted all those things for the record, I will rule from the chair that uh, Commissioner Real may participate in this matter. So, um, if uh, so, you have a uh, uh, gathering on August third. Same as always, wine and beer well, in the room. Um, probably not beer, no, for real. Okay, wine in the room, and you're doing an art show. Yes. Okay. Anything else? What to us? It's going to um, be an excellent art show. Yeah. Okay. It is. It is. All right. Yeah. Rossi. Okay, then uh, I will make a motion that we approve the application for one day wine and wall license before the library. Do you have a fee waiver request on that? Do you have a fee waiver, yes. Yeah, you know the drill. <laughs> I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't remember. Last, certainly not least. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> and um, that just reminded me that I think I failed to request my fee waivers as usual on my paperwork. I can, we can enter we can those right now. Way, <laughs> we can see our way to get it. Thank you. <laughs> So, Ms. Plano, you have uh, one, two, three, four, five events coming up August 26th, September 8th, September 21st, September 27th, September 29th. Yes. And these are all wine and beer only? Wine and beer concession sales only. Okay. Do you have the Forbes one? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay, do you have any questions? I do Allison? not. I do not. Okay. Uh, nice lineup. <laughs> How about you make a motion? I'll make a motion that we grant the application for one day wine and malt license on the dates uh, and for the events listed. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. I'll aye. also amend the motion to grant a fee waiver. Okay, second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Okay, thanks. We should have told you to come later because of all that. No, I kind of knew, but I didn't even read through the agenda well, and then I was like, oh, there's six things at the top. <laughs> Enjoy the end of your meeting. All right, see ya. Thank you. Okay, um, now we can get to these minutes I was watching. <laughs> we 
review and approval of the June 1st and June 29th uh, minutes. I saw no changes I wish to do. Did you? No, I didn't. Are we going to approve the minutes as written? Uh, I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any new business? Is that both minutes? Yes, both minutes. It's in my car. I can run to my car. I have, I have a new one. I have. You gave me your old one. Yes, I did. I, I, I didn't give you my old one. How about if I just like destroy it? And I cut it up like a break. Really? Jeez. What is it? What is it? And you have you to recycle like them or old. something? Oh, All right. Yeah. So, um, can I not uh, control this? Is there anything else that we we're September seventh? Is, is, is there scary. any reason we, we may yeah. okay. we'll, uh, we'll right. so um, before we adjourn, status of other legislatively approved licenses. Are there any remaining? Any that are likely to come before us? I can't remember how many. No, no, the other one is um, um, semester. Have they gotten in touch with you? Yes, they have not submitted any people yet. They will be waiting to your application. And these people will, I mean, uh, uh, the, uh, the place that they haven't done anything yet. They will come back. They will come back and tell us what they intend to do. And um, based on the guidance we received from the city solicitor, we'll take appropriate action. And attorney, I can't. Go. No, 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 she was sitting over here. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, um, Dad was a judge. I got it. Yeah, she was um, Karen with Dan was a when she first got. Okay. I was trying to figure out what she was doing there, whether there was something. Oh, she left it out. Yeah, Sometimes people anything. linger it because they got something you want. Yeah, they got the very thing is done. She left it. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Um, Am I taking notes on this? Hmm? Am I taking notes on this? Should I shut off the camera? Or? Well, we haven't adjourned yet. Okay. Anyway, no, yeah, no, well, we, do have, we, do have, we do have a live question here. We haven't heard from the other two uh, potential applicants under, under the special act. Um, uh, we will probably hear from uh, Mr. Kotowski and his, his attorney, and um, we'll see what they want to do and use the opinion of the city solicitor as our guide in that. Uh, has Mr. Gove been provided with a copy of that memo? We should give it to him. Um, he had a conversation with the city solicitor. Right? Okay. Would you give him a copy of that email? I, I read the email. Oh, okay. All right. He, All right. So then he called. To the it's city it's public there. record. He should right. just know. All yep, the cards should be on the table. Okay. There, I showed it to him. I read it. All right. Okay. All the cards should be on the table, so he knows what's going on. Um, so we'll hear from Mo. Fine. That's all. Just wanted to know whether we might have any. It looks like questions. She did call us questions about a license that's potentially available that could be owned by her. So I think she's making a decision. About there is one floating around, yes. Yeah. There's, I think there's two, possibly going to be three, but there's two. And so she was looking into that and trying to figure out how she could do both, but it didn't seem to be a point that she could do both. You can't find her two at the same time. Okay, great. I'll make a motion that we uh, adjourn this meeting. Second. Well, okay.